Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Um, I'm really excited about this video, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've certainly learned from, do you remember, remember the Seth Lotus leaf puddings we did? Um, made a schoolboy error with these uh, just yesterday. Um, I've sort of almost given up hope, so they've been sat here on the green, uh, on the windowsill behind me, behind this blind. I just rolled this down for ease of shooting, otherwise you get a little bit of that light and the windows behind me reflecting. Um, so I've sort of given up on them and I thought, you know, sorry, I'll, I'll check them, I'll see what they're like. Um, and in the process of checking them, I actually pulled the roots off of them, so they had actually struck in here. Highly irritating, schoolboy error. Um, what have we learned? Don't fiddle with them, basically. Um, so that got me to thinking. So they, they have struck in here, just on a window, so that's relatively straightforward. Um, and obviously, I didn't do anything special in order to get them to produce roots or to strike. Um, so I was thinking, how can I do this and, and completely avoid ever having to touch them? Um, and I thought to myself, well surely we'll take some leaf puddings and just put them straight into pots with pre-prepared media um, and fingers crossed uh, they should strike it and, and sort of take off. I, I've read on some forums that people are able to actually get these to strike in just pure perlite with nothing else, just keeping them humid, um, obviously with a bag or something to keep the humidity up uh, inside. So that got me to thinking, I was like, I've got enough equipment to do this. So what I've done is I've brought my cephalotus home, this is my little one, I've brought both my cephalotus home and uh, in this video what we're going to be doing is taking a lot more leaf puddings, um, planting them up or potting them up um, and I'm going to take you through uh, my cephalotus growing media that I use um, and the equipment you're going to need to do this. So it's relatively labor, labor, unlabor intensive so I reckon you guys should be able to do this so if you have cephalotus um, uh, if not, this is how you can do it, and this is how we're going to do it. Okay, so here we're over on the on my uh, uh, kitchen surface where I do most of uh, most of these videos, much to my wife's uh, disgust. Um, so, the piece of equipment you're going to need today to do this, I've got some pure um, sphagnum peat moss in here. This is still dry, so it's real. Calm. We have to rehydrate that um, before we use it. Uh, in this container. This is Harry's um, beach spade. It's perfect for mixing this stuff up, so I use it all the time. Um, in here, we've got some washed aquarium gravel, uh, which is uh, about a few millimetre diameter. We're going to need some of that. And we've got some washed horticultural sand over here as well. It's quite coarse, um, but it's going to provide really good drainage uh, for the media. Because cephalotus, a lot of growers have issues with um, like crown rot. Um, over watering basically, so these like a moist free draining soil uh, where they grow in their native habitat so in order to, um, to, to sort of like replicate that we're going to put plenty of coarse granular material into the potting media to encourage that free flowing drainage which they enjoy so much uh, and I'm going to be sure, I'll bring you a bit closer in a bit and we'll have a look at how we mix these up and how we use them. Next thing we're obviously going to need is some cephalosis these are my two cephalotus which are usually in my terrarium at work. There's my smallest one and my big one. Um, there's plenty of non carnivorous leaves in here we'll be able to take, take off of there. Uh, and this has got, got a few as well. They're actually looking a bit flaccid earlier. When I picked them up I think they got a bit dry. So always water from the bottom. A bit of rainwater in there. And the pots have sucked that up quite quickly. So they're obviously looking a bit dry. I think their cells are looking a bit more turgid. They look a bit more plump now. So we're going to need those guys. Put them at the front. The next thing you're going to need, well, I suppose you could use a bag, I'm not going to use a bag, I'm going to use one of these propagators. I've got five or six of these things, they come with a little uh, clear plastic lid with a little vent on top so you can open it to allow a little bit more air in. I've got some three inch pots, little square pots that stack in here um, and the tray in which it sits has got no holes in so what I'm actually planning on doing is putting a bit of water in the bottom and letting them sit in a few centimetres of water uh, with the lid on top just to keep humidity up. And then I think I might either put them on the windowsill, unless my wife really doesn't want it, which is highly likely, in which case they'll go into the greenhouse. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll pick you guys up on the tripod, move you a bit closer, and uh, we'll go through well, doing the whole process. Okay, so first of all, sorry if there's a whining in the background, the washing machine's on the go. Uh, most of you, I'd imagine, have kids. Those of you that don't, please feel free. Well, look forward to the amount of washing you're going to end up doing. So... Anyway, so we've got sphagnum uh, peat moss here. This is still dry. It's easier to mix these elements together whilst it's dry to get a good proportion and a mix 
and then wefts it afterwards is a good advice. So we've got, what I simply did, so that we got, the, I had the right amount of stuff is, I've got eight pots, so eight of these little pots to fill up. So I put four pots, four scoops of uh, sphagnum peat moss into here. Uh, I then put two scoops of sand and three scoops of this, um, of this aquarium gravel. So it should work out as almost like a 50-50 mix. So we're gonna keep a bit of this to one side of the top dressing. Because if we top dress the top of our media, it's, it's, it slows down uh, or, and basically stops moss growth, which is really, really beneficial because you don't want mosses and stuff outgrowing the cuttings, basically. So popping back in there, what we'll do is we'll put all of the, uh, all of the washed horticultural sand in there straight away. We'll just scoop this out, put that in there. Thank you ever so much, all of you, for your comments um, on the, uh, the, the the sound issues and uh, and how hopefully uh, we've resolved this. I mean, th this whole video is going to be well from now on. I'm basically going to be filming everything on my camera, uh, on my phone. It seems to be uh, a lot better. I know the sound quality is uh, a, a lot better than the uh, the little uh, HD camera I was using before. So that's basically most of that in there now. And best thing to do is just mix it by hand. So we'll get the sand in there first. The greenhouse is doing really well at the moment. Um, it's a good temperature actually for these well, for these leaf pullings. Where, where cephalotus um, sort of originate from, it's quite coastal, so they, they get it's, it's actually not as hot as people may imagine. It's quite cool. They get a lot of sea mists and stuff as well, um, and which would probably tie in quite nicely with the greenhouse conditions. I mean, it's, it's not getting much hotter than about 22 degrees centigrade in there during the daytime. And at night, it's dropping down to approximately uh, 16 degrees centigrade, 17 degrees centigrade, depending on how much cloud there is around. Uh, I'm going to have to put some insulation up in the greenhouse soon, because obviously it's getting towards that point in time now where um, it, the nights are starting to get cold. We've had a couple of nights that have been down to about 10 degrees centigrade. So. Okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to put approximately two thirds of this aquarium gravel into the mix. Uh, I did actually stop the video there, I had to make myself a cup of tea. Uh, the first cup of tea of the day. It's not been, I've been out surveying trees all day long today, uh, out in the piddling rain. And uh, being out in the middle of nowhere, in the new forest, um, there's not really many opportunities for tea, so I'll just mix it. It's got to be super rocky, and I can't stress enough that this needs, needs to be super clean. There can't be any sodium, no salt, so clay sand won't do. Uh, even river sand has got a lot of minerals in it, which is, is not ideal. Um, but the, the washed horticultural sand, basically, they, they tumble it and, and rinse it again and again and again to, to get as pure. Uh, a sand substrate as possible, and that's what I've been using, and that seems to be really, really good. But otherwise, so so sodium is just death for plants, basically. If you ever want to kill a tree or a plant off, road salt or anything like that, it will, will do it very quickly. Right, so this is the sort of uh, the mix we're looking for. You can see there's lots of part sand particles in here, there's lots of this uh, aquarium gravel in there really rocky, sort of crunchy between my fingers. Um, that's ideal now. What I think that's actually pretty damp as it is. It's probably going to be a lot easier getting it in to the pots in its current state than if I was to wet it anymore. Um, I've actually got some rainwater to hand. We'll put a little bit in there. There's not much in there's about, I don't know, a few, just a few mil. Just in there like that comes Harry's Beach Spade, it's going to come in handy again here. We can just mix that in. Right, it's always easier getting it in the pots when it's dry. Okay, right. Next thing to do is to fill these pots up. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll speed this bit of the video up, otherwise it's not going to be very interesting for you guys. Just got to make sure that we push it down, pat it down so there's no air gaps. Because we're going to be adding, we're going to be watering once the leaf puddings are in, 
Um, there's nothing worse than having a slight air void in the pot and as you have water it something disappears, uh, all, all the media drops down to fill the hole up and then you're led, left with a sort of uneven um, amount of soil in the pot. Just want to really fill it up, pack it in with our hands, uh, make a bit of space and just drop it a few times. That just knocks any of the last air out of it. Don't fit it right the way to the top. Most of these have a, a little line in them where they're moulded. Just go to the line uh, and the rest of that we're going to fill up with the left of the uh, aquarium gravel we set to one side. So that's one down. Seven more to go. Okay, so that's those potted up. The whole theory about having the right amount of media through measuring with the that was an absolute load, load of crud basically. I ran out, I had to go and make some more uh, quickly, but it's, it's exactly the same mix basically. Um, so those are our pots all set up. So we've got eight of these ready to rock and roll. So that's going to be eight cuttings. Um, so that, 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 that's that bit done. So the next thing we're going to do is have to take the actual leaf cuttings ourselves. Unfortunately, I can almost feel them cringing in fear because of about to, what's about to happen to them. Um, I don't think it makes any real, uh, there was certainly no impact or negative impact from you know, a dead picture inside there. A little dead picture from inside uh, the crown of the plant. There doesn't seem to have been any negative impact from what, what we did to it last time. Wanted it was only a leaf off of each plant. Today we we're going to take um, take a few more. So this seems by far and away the most vigorous of the two plants. This guy's got lots of new growth. I mean, they, they basically live on a, a diet of horse flies because every time one comes into my office, it usually starts bouncing off the windows or off the uh, fluorescent lighting above, and I capture them and just feed them straight in to be dissolved. Um, by the cephalotus and they put on lots of growth as a result of that but an another way of feeding them is uh, just uh, free, free dried blood worms just drop them straight into the pots and sometimes you have to knock them in they get stuck a little bit um, and yeah if, if regularly fed they, they grow really really fast just a quick slurp of tea oh lovely so I'm going to have a quick look around there's some nice big leaves over on this side so I'm probably going to want to take some of those off uh, so it's exactly the same principle as if you were doing a heel cutting. You want to leave a little bit of stem uh, at the base of the, uh, the the leaf. So we're taking some of the cambium, as it were, where it meets the plant, just like that. So we've got a little bit of the nub in on the end of it. And then all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to orientate them all this way because I'm going to, they're going to be against the greenhouse, the main bit of sun, sunlight or the track of the sun will be this way through the sky and then simply push them and just pinch them in place like that. So that's one. Let's find another leaf. There's another nice big one around here towards this side. Push downwards like that. Not really happy with that one. That's not that's not come off nearly half as well as it should have done. Take take some of these from the edge here instead. I think. I'm gonna get two in one go here. Oh, there, there. Those were absolute beauties. Those ones. We can show you how far away, I mean these, these came, just, that's how far the actual stem of the plant is. It's about an inch back inside the uh, inside the actual crown of that plant. So this one, because we've got a long petiole attached to the leaf, make sure you can see this, move everything over a little bit. 
put that a lighting here. Um, I would have you closer towards it so you could see this in greater detail, but unfortunately the phone's on charge whilst we're recording this. So I'm just going to stick the stick the tweezers in there just to make a little indentation. Then push the PTR a little bit more depth of the cephalotus down inside, and then just firm the media around it like that, so it's nicely covered. Same again, just repeat the process. A little bit more depth on that one. Like this. Yeah, not happy. This is not how to do. I'll bring it up to you so you can see. Over here a little bit. So yeah, this is how not to do a leaf cutting. You see, it's left. None of the PTLs come with it at all. There's no little tab on there. What I'll do is I'll focus you back in. Uh, to see me take the next plant off, the next leaf off, and then we'll have a look at how a proper one should look. I have to lock the recording on the camera, otherwise it's constantly uh, focusing in and out, focusing in and out as I move, which really makes the video a bit peculiar, so that's why I have to get up and actually physically come over to you and actually make it focus. Just looking for the PTR. Get this track out of the way. Right, that's much better. There we go, so you can see that there. We've got a nice long PTO here, so some of the stem cells have actually come that so it's going to have a meristematic ability so it's going to have the ability to produce shoots from this from this point here so that's how it's supposed to look focus you back into the plants there we go right i was kind of hoping these are going to get to flowering size soon they have the most impressive flower stems these are uh, racemes of, of little flower spikes emerge and they're super tall. This is quite a diminutive plant um, for, for what it is but uh, the flower spikes can be like two or three feet taller than the actual plant which I think is excellent and um, they're, they're mainly pollinated by ants I understand they, they create a or they secrete a sticky substance to attract ants which are their main pollinator so that's all done in there don't want to take too much off your plant, I reckon, because this is the bigger, more vigorous plant, we'll take another, we'll risk another pulling off of this one. And then we'll get the others from uh, from the others, from the, the smaller plant. Right, that's big boy. Robbed of uh, photosynthetic surface. Some of these have got a bit of a, 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 a ready tinge to them where they were... Uh, subject to a lot more light don't necessarily think those would be the ones to go for so I'm going to go for the greener ones which are down in here there's a nice one again there so we've got some of that stem where it starts to the, the PCL starts to flatten and widen for its point attachment to the main stem of the plant Right, so that's the cutting taken. Slide this over here. And now the all important top dressing. So like I say, the top dressing of this gravel will really help uh, prevent weeds and uh, other small plants um, sort of uh, colonizing the surface of the potting media. Because where you know, anything like this will have spores, regardless of how well you wash your media out, um, regardless of that, there will always be opportunistic plants and spores floating around in the atmosphere. Okay, 
because what we don't want is anything out competing the rate of growth at which these plantlets um, emerge, have hopefully, hopefully emerge. Okay, so that's the, all the gravel applied to the top. Once again, that's just going to help control moss. Um, also makes it gives it the sort of Japanese gravel garden appearance. Um, that someone stuck a, um, a basil leaf in at the moment. That's what I think it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I've got some water out the water butt. And I'm just simply going to pour enough water into this tray so, that it's, so the pots are standing in about an inch of uh, an inch of rainwater, and that will soon wick up. But bearing in mind that 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 media we're using, and especially the peat, is only really um, damp, it's not really wet yet, so it will absorb a lot of this moisture as it hydrates the media, so at this point in time, don't be shy. We can always check that at a later date anyway. It's easy enough just to whip the lid off. And this lid just sits, hypothetically, just sits over the top like that. You know, we don't want the vet fully closed like that, just in case it does get a bit warm in there. And then you might end up with like damping off disease or something like that, affecting the, the leaves before they get a chance to become anything of any significance. Um, so that's that sorted then, really. That's going to go over on the window sill. There's no direct sunlight, especially this time of year in the UK when it's uh, predominantly raining. Um, and we should know whether or not it's worked inside of a month, I'd imagine. Um, I certainly won't be uh, extracting any of the leaves to check to see whether any of the roots have formed. Uh, we're simply going to wait for either new leaves or pictures to appear, hopefully pictures, but uh, only time will tell. So remember if you like these videos, don't forget to uh, give us a like and uh, if you feel like it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.